hello. Today, we are here to talk about five star predictions. Uh, it is only three o'clock in the afternoon, but it is as dark as if it were like 5.30 or six. So I guess that's just where we are in winter time. So forgive me if the lighting is a little weird. I think it's okay. I'm a little washed out, but we got the ring light on. We'll make it work. Okay, so five star predictions. Um, <laughs> I forgot that I had one of these like pending that I was supposed to be working on. And the good news is I actually did read most of these. So good job past me, I guess, uh, because I'd only picked five last time. I think in just a fit of peak at how bad I am historically at predicting these things correctly. But this time we've got a slightly beefier list and we'll see how I do on them. These are newer books somewhat. So that's part of why they haven't gotten read as a part of like my backlist read down because most of these are not old enough to merit my attention and, and like focus in trying to read them. But let's start with the ones from last time. So last time I, I picked the Three Dahlias by Katie Wa Watson, Wilson, Watson. Uh, the Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. The Murder in the Crooked House by Soji Shimada. The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels by Janice Hallett. And The Decagon House Murders by Yukito Ayatsuji. Yeah, so how did we do? Guys, maybe a smaller, more mindful list is the way to go because very well. We have, I so for my purposes, I always count 4.5 stars as a five star win because to me that's like best of the year versus a five star as an all time favorite. And really like for the purposes of a five star prediction, let's just kind of put them together. So of those five, two of them were four and a half or five star. So The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels by Janice Hallett was in fact, not only a 4.5, but a five star, which I would need to go back and double check, but this might be the first actual five star I've correctly predicted <laughs> in the history of this series. Maybe one or two others, but it's a rarity. Usually I feel great if I can just get a 4.5, but this is an all time favorite. It is a kind of um, unique, version of a mystery. It's uh, mixed media and it's a cult cold case delight. Ugh, this book was everything. I love this book um, and it is definitely a five star. The other highly ranked item, item, book, The Decagon House Murders by Yukito Ayatsuji. This is a classic of Japanese mystery. It is a take on an isolation, isolated close circle mystery, which is my all time favorite trope. And I think it's a very clever version of it. It's got some meta commentary in it, which I love. And while I think, I'm not sure if it's the writing or the translation keeps us from being fully five stars, this is a very strong four and a half star. I still think about this fondly. And this was one of my best books of the year last year. Um, and it's, I still am thinking of it very warmly. So yeah, these two are my biggest hits of this round. And then I had two four stars. So that's an A minus, still great. So The Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler is the second half of the duology. The first one is The Parable of the Sower. This one, oh God, given the state of the world right now, I don't know that I, it's hard to say if I would recommend <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, let's just say this is highly prescient to our current political moment. And uh, it has some really interesting themes in it around motherhood, around religion, and um, how religion impacts families. I, and it's all just like a really good dystopia. So it's an excellent book. But maybe check where you are mentally before you dive in. Uh, and then I'd say this, I can't actually, did I give this four stars? I may have given this three and a half. This is like a soft four if it was a four. Uh, it's a, it says a classic Japanese, like, sorry about that. Um, they were collecting for Thanksgiving for the neighborhood, which is lovely. Um, I forget what I was telling you guys about this one. 
Oh yeah, it's a classic lock. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japanese cl classic locker mystery. Um, yeah, this one was good. I think if you loved this trope, you would like this more than I did. I... <sighs> I enjoyed it, but didn't love it. But I think I could love something from this author, which is a little bit of foreshadowing. So I think just because it's a very um, convoluted, let's say, closed lock, uh, locked room mystery, and the convolutedness of it didn't fully work for me, but I could see someone else loving it more. But I appreciated how like classical and fun this one was. So, and then the last one in this original pile that I actually did not get to was The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson, which is uh, like a convention of Agatha Christie-esque, like a fake version of Agatha Christie. And somebody is killed at a convention for that over the weekend at a country house which sounds very me. I am rolling this forward to my next round of five-star predictions. So this is number one. I still think that this could be a five or four and a half or a five-star. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe we'll go into genre here. So that was a mystery. And I've got actually not that much mystery in this batch. Less. That last batch, which was very successful, was almost exclusively mystery. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, but there's a lot, a lot of actually sci-fi fantasy in this. So we'll see. Um, the Enigma of Room 2, no, not 2, 622 by Joël Diguet. Uh, this is a Swiss mystery in translation. And the blurb is a burnt out writer's retreat at a fancy Swiss hotel is interrupted by a murder mystery in this metafictional meticulously crafted whodunit from the internationally international best-selling author of The Truth About the Carrie Kiber Affair. Okay, so the main character of this is the author. So that's kind of the meta quality of it. It's in a snowed in hotel, which is a setting I love. And uh, I got a recommendation of before this one from Arliss, who has been watching me for a very long time. And I am putting faith in to know that I would like this. It sounds like a me kind of book. So I think it's a pretty safe guess, at least for a four and a half or a five star. Um, then we've got the foreshadowing, which is the Tokyo zodiac murders by soji shimada now i know you're thinking didn't you just say that this was a soft for maybe a three and a half and actually now that i'm thinking about it i do think it was a three and a half um yes i am <laughs> but if you see everything about this author always mentions the fact that they are the author of the zodiac the tokyo zodiac murders this is his like big book from what i can tell and it is a serial killer trope so um let's see here it's 1936 um and these seven women are found dismembered and buried across rural japan by 1979 these tokyo zodiac murders have been obsessing a nation for decades but none of the murders have been solved a mystery obsessed illustrator and talented astrologer set off around the country and you follow pursuing the enigma of the Zodiac murderer through the madness, missing leads, and magic tricks. That sounds like a very me book. And considering that this is a very well done version of a locked room mystery, but just too convoluted for what I like, I think the convolution in a serial killer, like a ritualistic serial killer type story, works a lot better for me. So I think that this could be a five star. It's a classic of Japanese mystery or like crime fiction. And I think that this could be for me. So I just realized that none of these are American. I've got a British, a uh, Swiss and a Japanese mystery <laughs> lined up. That's, oh man, I'm, I know I'm not always the best guys at getting things in translation, but slowly but surely I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to, get, to broaden my horizons a little bit. Tangent. Um, the only nonfiction book I put on here is Belly of the Beast, The Politics of Anti-Fatness as Anti-Blackness by Deshaun L. Harrison. I put this on here because A, I just think it, it's short nonfiction. It's a topic that resonates with me as a fat person and kind of talking about the intersection of fatness with race. Um, and I think it's that's a fascinating topic to me. And also, I just I have been thinking a lot 
with the rise globally of like more right wing politics and seeing kind of the reversion from body positivity in terms of like sizing that's included in store places and the rise of Ozempic and all of that. I've just been thinking a lot about like a retrenchment of body commentary and kind of like body fashion um, as potentially, I don't know. I've seen some TikToks about that also recently that I've been thinking about. So anyway, it just feels like the time to read this book. This feels like a good moment for it. And like I said, it's short. It's a topic I really care about and I've heard good things about it. So I am expecting that this is gonna be great. And therefore I'm guessing it could be a five star for me. Okay, now we get to my big old, there's, there's five speculative ones. So this time around, I guess I have nine instead of five. We'll see how that plays out. <laughs> um, okay, so maybe, ooh, how, how do we wanna go through these? Maybe we'll go like sci-fi to fantasy, sure, okay. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna say is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. And this is a sci-fi set, set in space. And it's with this group of nuns. And I don't know, I read, this was in my try a chapter challenge because I was trying to see if this was something I definitely wanted to read. And this was one of the highest rated first chapters I had in terms of like, ooh, I really like the writing in this. I'm liking the kind of tone in the opening scene. This woman thinks she's gonna be able to like become a mistress rather than a nun. And then it's like reversed and she's still gonna be on the ship. So I'm intrigued about what's going on. And so if the intrigue keeps up, Potentially, this could be a five star. Also, you can see with the ring light, look how shiny, ooh, pretty. Um, so yeah, this is like set in space, in space, like this is sci-fi, sci-fi. So that is that. And then two other, oh no, wait, this one isn't sci-fi. This one is fantasy. Okay, that'll be my transition one. Uh, one other sci-fi book, but two books that I picked up because of the buzz I heard when they were nominated last year in the Goodreads Choice Awards. Um, one is I Keep My Exoskeletons to Myself by Marissa Crane. This is experimental sci-fi, and this is kind of a risk. Both of these are, but I'm I'm banking on the good comments from my comment section when I looked at these last year. But this one says, The Department of Speculation meets Black Mirror in this lyrical speculative debut about a queer mother raising her daughter in an unjust surveillance state. So this is, I think, like a weird book that the writing, it's its not a conventionally written book. It is, I will say, a dystopian story, it sounds like, now that I'm looking at this specific description. It's being compared to Sheila Hetty and Ocean Byung, and I don't know, it just, it's, it's a speculative book with experimental writing, and that could either be a big hit or a big miss, and I'm just, this is like a bold prediction. I think that this is gonna be a big hit and that I'm gonna love this and I could potentially give this four and a half or five stars. Vinco, aka Coven, is about a modern coven in, I think, Toronto. And again, it got a lot of good buzz. It didn't make it very far. I don't think it made it to the second round of the Goodreads Choice Awards last year, but it got a lot of really good buzz coming out of that. People were like, oh, I actually really like that one. I'm glad to see it here. And I'm always down for modern witches. That sounds great. It's a wildly imaginative and compulsory, readable epic of adventure history, Americana, feminism, and magic. Yeah, there we go. So we got a coven and... We got a spoon quest, it sounds like, a quest for spoons. So we'll see how it goes, but you guys seem to really like this one last year, and I'm gonna, again, put my faith in you and say that I'm also really gonna like that. Okay, two last ones, both of these are fantasy. This one is recommended from Leanna as the place I should start for my first full Terry Pratchett. And I'm gonna read it for Christmas. And so many of you have co-signed this as a good place for me to start with, with him. And that is Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. Hogfather is like ye fantasy version of Santa Claus from what I can tell. Um, I think this is gonna be funny. I really love this edition I picked up and I'm very excited about this. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed, oh God, what was the, can see that the television adaptation poster in my head but the Neil Gaiman collab he did 
whatever that book is with the angels and the demons. I can't, my brain is really slow today, guys. Sorry, I have got a lot of brain fog going, but um, whatever that was, I really enjoyed it. It was one of, actually probably one of my favorite fantasy things I've read this year. It was really good. And I read that on her, uh, we did a, a swapping TBR project and I read that because Leanna gave it to me. And so this is going to be my first full Terry Pratchett. And since that was where she said I should start, feels right to honor where she said I should start. And I'm hoping that this becomes a holiday classic for me as it apparently is for so many of you. Okay, and then finally, last but not least, another one that I think is a little bit of a reach, but I could see that if I love this, I like really loving it. And I did try the first chapter and really enjoyed the writing in it because I'm being a good girl and reading first chapters before I buy books from authors I've never read from before. I'm getting better about that. So How to Become the Dark Lord and I Trying by Django Wexler. I have seen good buzz for this this year. It's a new release and it is... Uh, like satirical tongue in cheek take on high fantasy. Uh, f let's see, uh, laugh out loud fantasy about a young woman who tired of defending humanity from the Dark Lord decides maybe the Dark Lord is onto something after all. That just seems really fun, lighthearted, um, meta or sort of self aware in its um, commentary about epic fantasy. So I think that this could be a really big hit for me. I know I like the writing. I like this as a premise. So I think this could be, be a five star. So those are my predictions. I'll try to get a full shot in here. Ah, nope. Okay, turn this around so you can see all the spines. Okay, these are my predictions. Of these, you guys let me know what you think the one I'm most likely to give five stars or four and a half or five stars is. Um, do you think any of these were horrible mistakes? And you're like, Mara, you're definitely not going to like that. I don't know why you put this on this list. Uh, let me know that too. And yeah, I think that will do it for now. I hope you guys are taking care of yourself. Hope you're doing well. And you will see me, I think, pretty soon for a reading vlog. That's the next thing up for me to edit after this one. So look forward to that. Uh, yeah, take care. Hit the bell if you want to know when I post next. It should be pretty soon because, you know, I'm getting back in my, my groove, my reading groove and my YouTubing groove. Um, so, yeah, hope you are doing well. Have a lovely day. And I will catch you on the flippity flop.